Spider Co. 2011 product update by Nut and Fancy. Hello everybody, this is of course Nut and Fancy on the reviewing table. Going to go low tech, reviewing what's new at Spider Co. for 2011. Kind of going back to a Nut and Fancy project tradition. I'm talking catalog reviews. You guys remember when I used to do those? I know you do. I've seen the comments. Please do catalog reviews, Nut and Fancy. I think I will. I want to start off with this one. Um, it's a real time effective way to go into a manufacturer's lineup and show you what my initial impressions are of the lineup, uh, or the knives in this case. Uh, you know, same stuff I've always said. You know, my initial take can be wrong. Sometimes when I see the knife in person, I feel differently about it. I'm either stoked or maybe less stoked. I ended up hating it, you know? That can happen. And if you've never watched a catalog review, not in fancy style, that is. Um, I do this. Well, I've always done this. If you, I really, really dig it and love to add it to my personal collection, you will see the acquisition box. That way, if, if and when I can ever add it to the collection, the TMP inventory, I just do that oh-so-satisfying <coughs> check mark of obtainment. Love that. This marker sucks. And then I'm going to give a mark of death in this review. If I do not like it, I would never, ever want it. I'm going to go, mark of death. Yeah, so you'll see that. And then again, I can't overemphasize this initial impression. Some of these knives, by the way, guys, you have seen in SHOT Show videos here in the Nut and Fancy Project. Sometimes with the designer or uh, you know the collaborators and stuff like that. Go check out my SHOT Show videos. Uh, I'll mention that if I remember as we go along. Let's get to it. Product update. Man, I love Spider Co. knives. Really, really do. So exciting. We open up page one of the brochure. Oh. Excitement level dropping on page one. Let's see. We got the Ladybug 3 tattoo. It's a stainless steel blade, VG10 steel. We got the uh, Ed Shimp balance, balance. I love Ed Shimp. We, we saw his CF version of this knife. Sorry, Ed. Not digging it. Mark of death for both of those knives. Yeah, I'll never want those knives. I just, uh, for this knife, stainless steel handle knives, by the way, I just, I'm very chilled towards. I don't like them. In very rare instances will I like a stain, stainless steel handle knife. They're very thin, yes. They're very durable, yes but they're heavy compared to other handle materials. I just don't. It doesn't turn me on. Transmit heat, cold, all that stuff. I don't like the blade shape on that. I would never use it. I know. It has its purposes, just not me. Let's see. We got the MGGYP Man Bug. Initially, initially, I looked at this and I was like, that's cool. It looks like the other bug knives. I'm talking like the blade profile, which I absolutely love. Get, did a review on those already. 1.1 ounces. That's cool. Stainless steel bolsters. I usually don't dig those so much, but with a knife so lightweight, I can take them. Dove grade G10 scales. That's good. However, clipless, just like the other bug knives. Uh, that's it's a tiny knife. Okay, that's why it's clipless. So, you know, take it or leave it. I'm not going to give that a mark of death, but I'm not going to give it a box either. It's just kind of like I'm going to do this. That means I, I'm considering, but it's not like totally cranking my wheel. Next page, 2011 Spider Co. Oh, interesting. Yes, the movie's getting better as it goes along. First up, the cat. Full flat ground, 440C blade, skeletonized liners, makes it weigh only 2.5 ounces. Great blade shape, maybe not quite as much belly as we see in some other Spider Co. designs. What do I have on the table here? Oh, I got a Manix 2 G10. Love that. I got another Spidey review coming up, so that's why these are on here. Oh, Sage. Yeah, the Sage 3. See, I like the belly on that a little bit better. These are actually much more expensive knives than these cat ones. The cats, um, the cat, Chicago, and Squeak, they're all Taiwanese produced blades in 440C. And like all offshore production blades for Spider Co., I expect quality control to be smoking. Awesome. If you have an issue with offshore produced blades and you don't want to buy these, but I understand. 440C, like I was saying, I'm, I'm kind of not digging it so much these days. I've had some very mediocre performance cutting-wise, resharpening-wise 
with some 440 steel blades, but not by Spyderco. I would like to get a hold of you know their version they're doing, their heat treat they're doing. I can't imagine it would experience those problems, but usually I'm not. Look at the prices. I went to CutleryShop.com and just bounced into there and grabbed a couple prices. Honestly, the price levels on these make me much more excited. I didn't get one on the squeak. 30, 37 bucks for a knife of this quality. It looks like medium traction G10. It's a liner lock. Skeletonized liners. I'm so glad to see that. Finally, we're making some prog progress. I expect it to be very sharp out of box. Jimping on the top. I don't see jimping. It's really hard to tell. If those are, if that's not jimped, top and bottom, I'm going to be a little bit more chilled on it. Let's see. Do I give that a box? Yeah, I will. If it's jimped, though, I'd probably give that to a squiggly mark. There we go. Let's see. Chicago's like it, but that's going to be a shrunk down version, probably for legality purposes, like they say in the write-up here, for two inches or less limitations. You might want to carry the Chicago 440C full flat ground leaf shaped blade G10 handles, Michael Walker liner lock skeletonized 2.2 ounces. Like it. Um, <laughs> I was going to give it a mark of death. Actually, I am going to give it a mark of death. What? <laughs> you guys, you guys are like what? That's a cool knife. How could you do that? Well, because for me, I wouldn't. I would go with this one. I would go with the cap. Because where I go, where I'm pressing my blades into service, I don't have the legality concerns. Why would I go with a sub 2 inch blade when I can go with this, a 2 and 7 16 inch blade or 54 mils? I'd go with this one. So you probably won't see a review on Chicago. Subject to change. I know, I could be off. This one look, reminds me of the Dragonfly right here, the squeak. This is a slip it knife, or it's, and it's produced in Menaggio, Italy. Ooh. Well, check the steel, dudes. N690. Oh, daddy loved that steel. N690, extremely rust resistant, holds that really fine edge. I love that steel. That's a European uh, steel. I've talked about it in other reviews. Little tiny blade. It's only 51 millimeters long. That's two inch. So these, these, both of these knives have the same issue. <laughs> you guys are going to just laugh. But I'm going to give this one this. Uh huh. The steel choice. And jimped on the bottom, I can tell. Maybe not jimped top side. I don't think these are jimped, by the way. It doesn't look like it in the pictures. That that really sucks. Jimped bottom on that, though. But for now, I'm going to give that a box of attainment. Only 1.6 ounces as well. So it's lighter even still. Even though that is a slip at knife, it's not a locking knife. That would be a knife I'd like to add to my collection, the squeak. It's just very cool. Next page. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Yes! All right, you can tell I'm excited about this page. You can tell I've already pre-researched it and stuff. First up, C150 GP Junior. This is this home run of the product update right here, guys. This one. Romanian uh, manager, Alexandru Dionescu. He designed this. Love this blade at first sight. Again, if I saw it in person, I might feel differently. So many things I like about it though. First up, the weight. 2.8 ounces on the Junior. The steel, a fave of mine, always has been. VG10, 3 and 1 8 inch blade, 79 millimeters. Big deployment hole. Look at the grip. Oh, dudes. Now that is a knife, and they talk about this in the write up, that your, your hand would not go forward on in a piercing mo movement if you had to use it in such a manner. Okay, so you lock in on that really deep choil. Not a lot of room for a lock there, so Spyderco slams in a compression lock there. G10 scales. I'm thinking probably a wire clip on the other side. Tip up carry. Oh, what do we have here? Highlighted, it's so important. Jumping. Huh, making some progress on these designs. I'm seeing it more and more. Excellent. That is awesome. Totally worth the $121 price tag. That's a cutlery shop. Also, go check out, uh, if you don't see them there, go check out my other buddies, notjustknives.com. Okay, both of those are TMP knife suppliers. There's lots of good ones, but those support the project and give really good prices and service. Uh, the Junior. I love it. Love the blade shape. Nothing I don't like about it. Uh, First looks. Here we go. Chaparral. That's C152 CFP. I like it. 
the only thing I would say on the chaparral, and this is supposedly going to uh, highlight different handle materials, in much the same way the Sage series highlights locking mechanisms, this is all about the handle material. This one coming out in that twill woven CF, which actually I love. Where'd it go? Here we go. Spiderco Sage 1. This is the handle material right here. Do you guys remember when I really uh, knocked the Native 4 CF pretty hard for that epoxy-like CF? Here it is. Yep. Sucked. I said so in the review of this. And what do you know? Spiderco changed it. This is a huge improvement. Get some traction. It's gorgeous. It's good looking. I would say medium level traction on this. Not high level. Just so you know. There we go. The Chaparral has, I think, is wearing that same one. And that is a spine lock on the back. Uh, what I was going to tell you about this, though, is it's very similar to the Sage. Mm, what would I price it at? $94 at Cutlery Shop, which, is, by the way, is a smoking deal. Would I get that or the Sage? I don't know. If I have a Sage already, would I buy that? Uh, probably not. I mean, how do you improve the Sage? Seriously, you're going to see it in the review. There's a jimping top, bottom, locks it in. Double choil, tood, similar blade shape. It, it, to me, it's almost an identical knife set for the lock. Yeah, slight differences in the blade. This is more elongated. Don't get me wrong, I think the, the Chaparral is smoking. Great knife. Um, but if you own the Sage already, it's probably too similar to that to justify the expense. What's the weight on that? 2.5 ounces. Huh, maybe I am more interested. S, S30V steel, same as this one. Huh, that weight is pretty awesome. The reason I say that is because the Sage is three and a half ounces. Oh, huh, maybe I will put a box now. Oh, I forgot to do that. I know. I'll get around to it. There we go. Oh, yeah, Junior. Mm, for review purposes only, I would like to check that out. Check out the Chaparral. And the weight is very intriguing. It's a full ounce lighter than this. That's If that weight is correct in the catalog. We've kind of seen it at times where it wasn't. No names. Punch <coughs> made. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to cold. On to the Dragonfly 2 Salt. When I did my review on the Dragonfly, uh, criticized it a little bit, rightly so. No jumping. Had to put skateboard tape on it. Remember those days? What do you know? They fixed it. So important it's highlighted. The new Dragonfly has it, and this one in H1 Steel highlighted. Love the yellow handle. I love H1 Steel. It gets an acquisition box. I bet the weight is like dynamic too. What do we got? Oh, 1.2 ounces. You know why? Because since this is a saltwater knife, and by the way, if you don't know, H1 steel, you know, that is uh, perfectly suited for any saltwater application. This would be an awesome fishing knife to have with you all the time. 100% rust proof H1. And it does take an edge and it holds an edge too. Nitro, let's see, H1 blade alloy is nitrogen based and contains almost no carbon. What else I going to tell you about the weight though? No steel liners. It's kind of old school Spyderco, the way they used to do the Delicas and Enduras. These have no liners in them. That's why they're so light. And you don't need liners in a knife of that size. Love it. That's really cool. Cool knife. $43 at a uh, cutlery shop there, guys. Then we get a bird knife. This one's kind of cool. Uh, smaller. Let's see, we were working. By the way, the blade length on the Dragonfly was 57 millimeters. For my European and Asian friends, thank you very much. Love you guys. What do we got here? Uh, the bird turn. I'm trying to show you the specs. <laughs> Looking through the viewfinder. Two and three quarter inches on that blade length. That's actually a really good blade length. It's not like too huge where you couldn't need to see it. I bet you this one's way affordable. Um, 1.7 ounces, 8 CR13 MOV, which is a very good steel. Man, can it take an edge? Seriously. Look at this, though. This is kind of an improvement on the turn over the other ones. It has that wire clip on it. And this is one of my, probably my all time favorite Spyderco clip. Yep, these heat treated spring wire clips are awesome. Look how deeply situated it is, too, for carry. Okay, that's going to get an acquisition box. One thing I don't like about the birds, I just don't dig the eyeball, the bird eye deployment hole. That's a second kind of cool thing, guys. That's all I'm saying. Just doesn't turn me on so much. 
I'd much rather go with a regular round. But it's just so minor, it's ridiculous you can bring up. Look, jumping top and bottom on that bird turn. So that's a good steal. G10, great pocket clip. Medium traction G10, I should say. Jumped. Yeah, that's a home run. Pretty much every knife on here is a home run. The only thing, and I still think this one is, it's just very similar to their other knives. Next page. You guys digging this? I am, it's fun. Did I go through all that side? Yeah, I did. Okay, we flip it over. Oh! Fixed blade. Ed Shemp. Man, I like talking with Ed. He's such a gentleman. Ed is such a gentleman. And he's a great knife designer. He's so in the know in the blade industry. Pretty much unlike me. Yeah, seriously. I, I forget names all the time. It's embarrassing. Ed's great, man, because he knows all the designers. He knows their backgrounds. He knows what what's going on with them. He's personal friends with them. Ed's just quality people, man. $126 for the Ed Shimp Iraq. Here's what I love about this knife. Well, let me get out of the way things that I maybe at first glance don't dig so much. The blade shape. Uh, kind of funky. Uh huh. Okay, I'm just going to get that out of the way. It's angled, and I think the, the I could be totally off on this. I think we're talking about an accelerated cut, how it's angled downward from the handle. That might be the thing. Ed's very much attuned to ergonomics with a human hand. I think that's probably where he was going with this. Uh, the FRN handles on a full tang blade, I'd have to handle them, see if they're comfortable. Especially in a chopping, a serious chopping task like you've seen here in the Nut and Fancy Project, like a lot. Is that going to be comfortable? Also, anytime that there's a very sharply protruding, um, I don't know, handle portion, your hand can run into that sometimes. So again, that's an ergonomic thing that would have to be revealed in testing. In chopping tasks, I find it's more of an issue back here. So this area here, as I'm chopping, hits your pinky and not so good. What was the knife that I haven't reviewed yet? I'm going to though. It's the Spyderco Hossums are like that, how they dive down at the end and it hurt my pinky as I'm, I'm slamming it. So could have an ergonomic issue need to be tested. Lanyard loop, jumped from Mr. Shemp. Nice, love it, love that thumb ramp. That's about the only bad thing I can say about it. The good thing I can say, VG10 steel. 9.1 ounces, very reasonable carry weight. There's a reason for that, skeletonized tang, I think. Yep. Love the sheath, Bolteron sheath with the G, G clip. I highlight that stuff because it reminds me to mention it to you guys. I think that's cool. Uh, for personal collection, would I spend my money on it? Good question. Let's see. It's $126 at Cutlery Shop. Uh, the blade length, six inches. I would probably say no. A uh, six inch blade for a chopper is just too small for me. I want a bigger, at least an eight inch blade. And we're talking philosophy of use stuff here. What would I use this knife for? Camp knife? Yeah, I'd rather have, this is flat, flat ground, the write-up says, from this portion down. But I'd rather have maybe a more traditionally styled knife for a camp knife. And flat ground there. Six inches would be great. Five inches even better for a camp knife. Four inches, awesome. So now we're in a, this is kind of a go-between size. I don't know. Six inches to make it a chopper. I don't know. I'm going to give this a squiggly mark. What? Yep, that's what I'm giving it. Uh, I think if if you you know don't have a lot of knives and you want an all-arounder, maybe that could work. I'd have to test it though. Next up, C157 GT IP is it? Yep, Lion Spy. We saw this in person at my Shot Show booth review with Mr. Sauglesser. Love this knife. Kind of like the SR1 from Line Steel, Line Steel of Menaggio, Italy. There's so many things I love about the Line Spy. It's mostly a second kind of cool knife for me, though, guys. Um, things I like. The looks. I think it's just a cool looking blade. It has half G10 on one side, uh, and I think it is, I want to say, titanium. RIL, that is Reeve Integral Lock on the other side. Yelp. Short pocket clip, that's cool. It has a roto block. It's a pivoting locking mechanism that functions as a backup lock. Love that. Yeah, it just looks cool. It has big jimping on the spine, which is very functional. Razor sharp out of box. 
nice belly, I and mean, in some ways maybe too much belly. I've been using knives that have that real abrupt up sweep towards the tip. For EDC purposes, I don't like it. For skinning purposes, outstanding. Again, we see one knife can't do everything you want. You're going to have to make some compromises. Such a gorgeous knife. And I don't think it's that heavy for what you're getting. 5.9 ounces is doable for a blade that size. And that huge wide blade will shear so well. Don't know much about the LMAX steel yet. Line spy. Didn't get a price for that on you. Love it. Cool knife. Uh, let me see. i got to put a box next to that one. Yep. Yep. Next up. Oh, the Ojimbo 2. Mark of death. Hate it. Yep, sorry dude. Sorry. Uh, Michael Janik, you know, he designed that. I'm just not a fan of the Warncliffe blades. I'm just not. And there's a whole philosophy of use behind these blades. I know. How they can be employed. I just, I don't know. Some, You know, there's so much you could say about the, you know, why do you design a blade that way? What the slash cutting capabilities versus another blade style. I know. But it's very, very rare. Hopefully never I'll ever use my knife in a defensive encounter. More likely as a utility knife. And that being said, I need some belly, dudes. This can do some defensive stuff too. Absolutely. Um, no. Not for daddy. Not, not, not. Let's see. Oh! Ending the product update with a bang. Sent to Fonte Memory. One of the very first knives I reviewed here in the Net and Fancy project was a Senta Fonte 3. It is a Hall of Famer here in TMP for Everyday Carry, designed by now passed away, rest his soul, Frank Senta Fonte. This is a memorial knife for him, and it gets a box of acquisition. By the way, it doesn't mean I'll, I'll be able to get all these knives. I'm just saying I would like to someday, some way, review, use, cherish, hold, fondle, I'd love fondling this one. Look at this blue titanium handle with silver colored woven glass fiber scale. I think that's beautiful. I'm a sucker for titanium. I just love it. I love titanium handles. They're just so cool. They're durable. They're a little bit lighter weight than other materials. A spidey deployment hole. Look at the blade shape. It's just classically refined. Nice sharp tip. Steel used. A fave. VG10 3.3 ounces by the way. Blade length, 76 millimeter, 3 inches. That's a home run. Sent to Fonte Memory. It's probably going to be expensive, though. And if it's too expensive, it gets this. Because then it becomes disinteresting to me, personally. You know, if we talk, it can just go over the top. Here we go. Next one. Falatin Sub -hilt, Hilt Folder. My mouth's not working. Designed by Butch Falatin. Hope I'm saying your name right, dude. This is a cool knife because, look, it has both a deployment hole and thumb studs and those thumb, thumb studs double as your stop pin from over rotating. Isn't that cool? It's just a cool looking knife. To me it's reminiscent of a, another awesome blade uh, the Spider Code Navaja by Ed Shimp. Seems very similar to me. Interesting tip, look at that, how thick that is. Ground, it looks like it'd be super strong. Hollow grinding, not a showstopper for me. Steel is uh, S30V, heavier 6.2 ounces. Probably not skeletonized. And it looks to be a liner lock. Yep. Michael Walker liner lock right there. Let's put a box next to that. Just for review purposes, because that's a $161 blade. So that's a little bit pricier. Kind of on the higher end scale. But just as a Spyderco lover, me personally, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, the desk horn. What do you think I'm going to say? Hate it. Maybe hate's a little strong. I don't hate it. I just wouldn't spend my money on it personally. It's just not a design I dig. Again, we see the flat, worn cliff line. You're just asking for problems on your tip. I'm talking if you're actually going to use this blade. If you're just putting it in your collection, breaking it out every now and again, rock on, dudes. You'll probably love it. It is pretty. Very elegant. It's got that heat-treated spring wire clip tip down. What's up with that? It's jacked up. That's because it has a design. They can't put it on that end because it's too trim. There's your clip, by the way, on the Balotin. Seems like it ride, it'll probably ride a little bit high out of the pocket. There's a clip on the Synta Fonte. Done. Yes. That's your product update. 
mid, actually it's not mid, a little past mid 2011 from Nothing Fancy. Man, I love Spider Co. Great blades, usually great value. Stay tuned, we got some really fun knife reviews coming your way here in TMP. I love the blade. Nothing's changed, nothing at all. Spider Co. See ya.